What's up everybody, this is Scott and welcome back to another video. So we all here know that I kinda like Google products, right? So yeah, I have a bit of a problem, but I don't have this one. And this is the new Google Home Max. So Google has added to their home lineup, now the Google Home Max, they already had the Google Home Mini, which you can check my review out for, or the regular OG Google Home, which you all know that I absolutely love. So the Google Home Max is the newest addition to the Google Home family, and this thing is directly in competition with things like Sonos to get the music pumping through your house. So the Google Home Max is surprisingly heavy. It comes in at a very svelte 11.7 pounds with some dimensions of 13.2 inches in width, 7.4 inches in height and 6 inches in depth. The Google Home Max comes in two different colors, what Google calls chalk and charcoal or black and white for most folks like us. Overall, it's a really minimalistic looking speaker. There's only lights in the middle when you actually touch the very top where you give it the OK or hey command. Within the sealed Google Home Max, there's two 4.5 inch dual voice coil woofers and two 0.7 inch custom tweeters. So covering those sweet woofers and tweeters is this chalk colored acoustic transparent fabric. So there's nothing that's slowing down those luscious tunes from just flowing out of the Max and boy does it ever do that. So on the top and the left sides of the Google Home Max, there's these far field voice microphones that you can see. So while you're pushing out the loud tunes, you could kind of scream at it and go, hey, and it'd be able to hear you because of those microphones. So on the top of the Max, there's this slide bar that you can use where you play pause when you touch it in the middle, or you can slide left and right to control the volume up and down. But be prepared, if you go really crazy and it's gonna crank the volume all the way up, it can hurt in terms of sound because this thing gets super duper loud. So on the back, you can see that there's a mute switch to turn off the microphone. So in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a three and a half millimeter audio jack where you could plug in a record player or something like that. There's a USB-C port for, I don't exactly know, but when I plug into it, the only thing that it actually does is charge my device. So I don't know if it's supposed to do something else. I've tried to switch to figure out what the USB-C port on the Mac does. The only thing I've been able to figure out is the fact that it just charges it. So if that's the reason, cool, I can charge my phone while I'm listening to tunes. If it's for something else, I totally missed it. Additionally, there's a small button that you have to press really hard if you want to do a factory reset. So there's no accidental pressing and boom, you have a factory reset. You really have to press and hold to make sure that you do it. So of course this has the Google Assistant that's baked into it. So you can use the command of OK or Hey and ask it questions like, what's the weather? What's on my calendar? Or are the Cleveland Browns ever gonna win another game? And the answer to that is no. They absolutely will never win another game. As you can see on the screen, it's significantly larger when compared to the OG Google Home or the Google Home Mini, but clearly that big footprint is there for a reason, and that reason is the sound. Google says the speakers on the Google Home Max are 20 times louder than the original Google Home. 20 times louder. And I can attest to the fact that those are 20 times louder. Trust me, more on that in a minute. So one of the cool things that I like is smart sound. Now smart sound is one of those cool features that I know a little bit about, but not exactly how it works because it uses machine learning and AI. So essentially when you put your Google Home Max inside of a corner, those microphones that I talked about a little bit earlier, they're going to listen to the sound that comes out of the speaker. Then it's going to recalibrate itself based on if it's close to a wall, out in the middle of the open, whatever it can to make sure that you get the best sound when you're using your Google Home Max. With that being said, I have absolutely no idea if it did what it was supposed to do when I moved the speaker around. I don't know what black magic Google foo it was supposed to do with machine learning or artificial intelligence. I have to trust the fact that it did it because everywhere I put it, it sounded amazing. I trust Google enough to know that probably something was occurring, but I have nothing to compare it against whether it actually did a smart sound here, but not a smart sound there because it sounded amazing everywhere. Another thing that I really liked about it was the aux port in the back because you can get crazy good sound because that speaker is amazing. So I've talked about those things. What about the sound quality itself? The sound quality is exceptional. It is really, really good and it gets really, really loud. Honestly, I was a little bit surprised at how clear it was because I'd heard it got really super loud. So I expected a, like a muddy-ish type sound, but those highs, mids, all clear. 
Those tweeters are excellent for that. And the bass that comes out of this thing, if you're not careful, it can surprise you, but it's not too much bass like Beat headphones. With the custom tweeters, it makes the highs really nice and clear and the mids and lows are extremely good out of the woofers. So in full disclosure, I tried Nickelback because it was a reoccurring joke between Greg and I. So I sent Greg an actual Allo message. That's right, I'm a person who uses Allo with a recording of Google Home Max all the way up and it nearly melted his Nexus 6P. Okay, that might have been a stretch, but it was an exceptionally loud recording. The bass will absolutely punch you in the gut if you let it, but in a good way, not in a bad way. This speaker, the Google Home Max, has the ability to make a ton of different music sound amazing, regardless of the genre. So as you can kind of see in some of the pictures, I've showed you that I had two. In the recording that I sent to Greg, I absolutely did the stereo pair and blasted Greg with it, but honestly, one would be plenty enough to fill an entire first floor of a house with enough sound that you wouldn't have to worry about having additional speakers. But I mentioned those two before, that was my most favorite part of the Google Home Max was the ability to have two different paired speakers. When you lay it down in horizontal mode, it does a stereo mode with one speaker. When you put them upright, it does a stereo mode with a pair, otherwise it'll be mono sound with just one Google Home Max. When I had those things paired in stereo mode, it was some of the best sound that I had heard in a really long time. So more about that stereo mode, when pairing and placing them vertically, you get two separate channels for each speaker, so it makes this really wide sound profile within the space that you're in. So you get all the same benefits of the Google Assistant baked in, but you essentially get double the power by having two Google Home Maxes. So I talked a lot about what I liked, let me talk about what I didn't like. I cannot figure out how easily to pair these things up to a television. I have a theory on how I could do it, but I have to buy additional parts to try to get a Google Home Max paired to my television. This isn't something like via Bluetooth. I wanna plug this thing in and use it like a sound bar. I haven't figured out an easy plug and play method other than getting additional parts, and maybe that will work. I've read some things on Reddit that say that they've been able to get it to work, but then the audio's out of sync. That's not something I'm gonna deal with right now. I'm just gonna wait until Google comes out and tells me how to do it if that's something that they do. Another thing that I didn't like was the USB-C port on the back. I'm not exactly sure what it's for. I would love to use it, and granted I'd like to charge my phone off of it, but I'm not always going to be around the speaker to charge it because I tend to put it in places up high and away from the children. Another thing that I didn't like about it, there was no optical audio or RC audio inputs, which is okay with me, but I can see how that would be a turnoff to some folks because otherwise you need a converter and then it gets messy and it's just not something you wanna mess around with. And probably my least favorite is the price point. $399 is a really tough pill to swallow and I completely understand that. However, if you're already looking at something like Bose or Sonos, and the Play 5 is probably the closest thing to this Google Home Max, that's already above that price point or right at that same similar price point, and the Max sounds that good. Plus, if you have other additional Google Homes throughout the house, or some type of automated lighting, or a Nest, or anything like that, this is a really easy plug and play method to connect your entire home. But should you buy it? Honestly, I don't know. If you already have a Google Home, and you like where it's at, and you like the sound it produces, this is not something that you want to buy. However, if you play a ton of music, you want that more robust sound and you don't mind your walls melting from the fact that this thing is super duper loud and makes some super duper great tunes, then yeah, sure, this is probably for you. So I know that sounded like a little bit of a cop out, but if you have the disposable income and you got a space for it, yeah, the Google Home Max is totally worth the price. So that's it, that's all I have. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing to our channel. As always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below, and we'll see you next time.